Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. We made our way all the way to Denver, Colorado. We're at the Denver Fire Department. This is station number three. Their Five Points station has one of the oldest stations they have. Got a lot of history here. So let's go take a look. Hi. You are? Chris Michaels. Nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet Thank you. you for inviting us in. Of course, anytime. Driving up, it was absolutely beautiful going through the city. It we went by the Rocky city. Stadium there. Yes. Came right down through the city. Yes, it's a beautiful city. And right next to you, you have all kinds of high-rise buildings. And they're all, right next to us, are all new. Okay. I mean, these, I mean, they just finished the one across the street. This one's under a year old. I mean, they're just putting them up. Everywhere. Okay, but this house alone is not new. How old is this house? This house was built in 1931. Okay. So they moved from here. If you actually go outside with me real quick, I'll show you. They actually, before they were here, they were just across the street. Yeah, let's go take the a look. The building's still up. Okay. So engine three actually started in 1888. Okay. They were across the street in that brown building with the yellow top trim. Okay. So the front of that building is actually an add-on, but if you were to be able to go through those doors right now, the arches in there were from where they have, the, they kept the horses in the back. Okay. And then they actually ran horses out of that building. Wow. Okay. So and that was in 1888. 1893, this was the first all African-American firehouse, and it was like that until 1958. Okay. And then segregation stopped. Okay. But all black African American firehouse, and then went from there to over here in 1931. Man. And then makes this a. Is this one of your older firehouses, or is it? It the... is the oldest firehouse in the city. Okay. Of Denver. Right. And it is the smallest firehouse. Okay in the city and so Denver. Today, still, not, still in operation. Okay, so we're gonna do a station cribs today. And Sounds we're good. gonna do a walkthrough. Perfect. Uh, and you got a lot of history involved in this, obviously, because it it's so old. Yes. Uh, it's a single engine, single, uh, single engine. bay uh, firehouse, but you got a lot of cool things. So we do got a lot of cool things. Do you mind if we go take a look? Anytime. All right. So in here, actually, before we start, we, I think we got the other gentleman on camera yep. who's walking around with us today. Who are you today? Uh, I'm probationary firefighter Jacob Stevens. All right, nice to meet you, Jacob. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the fire service. Thank you. So, um, so this walk right out of the, the street into your crew room. Yes. Okay. So this is our day room. Um, we're a busier firehouse, so not a whole lot of time is spent in here. Okay. We'd love to spend more time if we could, but if we ever get a chance to decompress, put our feet up for a second, this is where we do it. Um, they've integrated our training computer into the TV. Okay. So also when we have those big trainings where it's now over Skype and all the chiefs talking and all those meetings, we actually sit in here to actually watch those over the big TV. Okay. okay. Um, now this looks like an older kind of desk. What is this about? So we have our own line shop and they do all the wiring for the for our city, the radio stuff, fixes our radios and everything. So okay. this is actually an older style thing, but okay. all it is is when we get a call, comes over the speaker. If you can hear it right now, it's actually, our dispatch is actually tied into it. So okay. this is actually what is going over the radio right okay. now, dispatching somebody else to another call. Gotcha. So actually, the radio comes over, it actually has the jingler for, I don't know if any other firehouse has talked to it. So the jingler is just a bell. Okay. Oh, and firehouse. yeah. Different jingles mean different things. So three means the lieutenant's getting a phone call. Five means chief's here. Everyone 
come and meet. So okay. five also means the food's ready and it's time to eat. So gotcha. just an old school, like we acknowledge that we got the call and brings it to our dispatch. That's pretty cool. But yeah. So in here, there's a ton of history on the wall. Just from walking in the room, I can tell. A ton of Can you kind of walk me through what you have on the walls? I walk through a little bit. So these are citations. So if the rig was involved in the save of life or I mean something super big, um, your officer can put you in for a citation and it gets reviewed. And then if the rig gets it, it actually puts who was on the rig at the time, what happened and what was done. Okay. So those are all engine three citations from 1931 till oh, now. Wow. When they started wow. doing it. I don't even know when they actually started the citation process. Right. But it's cool that, I mean, to see your name or your rig on a plaque. Right. That they did and that's going to stay there forever. And it's going to stay there forever. Because this building is a historical building. Historical building. So, it'll never come down. Don't know how long they're going to let us out of, operate out of it. Okay. I hope it never goes away. I love this firehouse. Yeah. But it's so cool to see the history in it and still be able to be a part right, of it. Right, right. So up on the walls here, what do you have going across here? So there's a bunch of stuff going on the walls, bunch of pictures. So uh, the first three are a bunch of old retired guys. This was a retirement party. Okay. A bunch of, a bunch, a bunch of old guys back together. Yeah. And they showed up for that. Um, you got full crews at fire scenes, uh, the actual rigs operating. Yeah. Um, and then you got go along from left to right, it's the older engine three, from white to white and red to white and gold, okay. and then the newer rigs. And you just keep coming around, you got the really older pictures of when it was an all African American firehouse. So over here, these are the, the two pictures that you're talking about when it yes. was African American. Yeah. And then up here is all of the Chili Cook-Off Awards. Okay. So first place chilies, second place chilies, most money raised, right. and all of that stuff's on this side. Okay, so. okay. Is that your logo? So the logo, yes. Yeah. So Engine 3's logo was the eye of the storm. And okay, that, how did that, that come about? So it came about, so way back, this was a very, very bad neighborhood. It was very, wasn't the nicest neighborhood okay. in the city. So more of impoverished gangs, yeah, those gangs kinds of, and stuff. And it was that just, you think yeah. about when you think about it, big cities. Yes. We haven't actually done a big city yet. You know, we've been a lot of the rural or suburban areas. So this is the first opportunity we had from Heroes Next Door to come to a city department. So it was nice. kind of cool driving in and actually being part of a city. But you have those typical gang related things and stuff like that. So not to kind of get you off track, but yes. that's, that's, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, so this, is, so this is city, like this area is they, what they call five points. Okay. So right down on the corner, there's five streets that come together. It makes the five points and this five points. Okay. So five points back in the 70s, 80s was not the nicest neighborhood. So the eye of the storm came about. So I don't know if you know, but a hurricane, in the center of the hurricane is the eye. And the eye of the hurricane is the calmest part of the hurricane. Okay. So back when this wasn't the best place, this was the eye of the storm. This was the calming of the storm. This was the place you could come if you needed help. And everyone knew, like, if they needed something, like, to come to the firehouse. That and, was the you place. know, the gangs didn't mess with you. They, they just, didn't. They, they, just, they kept, left us alone. Yeah. We were here to, do, we weren't going to hurt them. But if they needed something, we were here to, to That's come awesome. Help them That's awesome to so, see. So you, you yeah. definitely stayed within the community. They didn't get you to move out or anything like that. A yes. lot of people are like, oh, I'm too afraid. They, they moved, but you guys stayed here. We did. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's see what else you have in the house. Here. All right, so if we move this way, um, the newer firehouses are going more toward single room. You get your own bunk room, your own bathroom, your own bed. Yeah. This is still dorm style. So there's okay. a couple of us left in the city of County of Denver that still have the dorms. Okay. So there's actually 15 people assigned to this firehouse. Okay. Um, and there's 14 beds in here because one bed is the captain's. Okay. And he has his own office. Okay. So what's cool about this is, so 14 beds, everyone has their own bed. Um, you don't have to change your sheets every day and move them for somebody else. So it's all yours. Right. Um, we do cover them to make them uniform so yep. it looks nice when people come. Yeah. Um, there's storage under each person's bed for their own So that's that why they're so high? That's why they're so high. So okay. there is a whole store, everyone has their own storage crate with extra stuff in there, their own stuff to keep it, it's not a whole lot of room in this firehouse. Right. Um, what all, what, what's also cool is the longer you're here, there's a tradition where you get a name plate. Okay. So, CJ Taylor. CJ Taylor has a white nameplate, so she's been here for at least one year. She okay. got it on her one year anniversary. It goes on your bed. Okay. And then 
the longer you're here, so if it changes color, so five years you get a silver nameplate, 10 years you get a gold nameplate, okay. and 15 years or more you get a gold nameplate with red writing. Okay. And what's really cool is once you leave this firehouse or transfer or promote out, the nameplate can get transferred up onto these boards up here and it just shows more of the history of this firehouse. Yeah. So like Josh Shower and Motley and Bob O'Neill right. have over 15 years in the same firehouse. Right. Which That's is awesome. cool. Yeah, yeah. How, how big is your crew? You have 15 here. How much do you run on your engine? So Denver has four, per, four person staffing on each rig, but five people assigned to each shift. Okay. So it breaks down. So there's three shifts. That makes the 15 five per shift. Yeah. And if you're the extra that day, you go fill another spot in another fire truck. Okay. So if you're the fifth guy and everyone's here, you're gonna go fill somebody else that's not there that day. Okay. And ride so like a call out or a sick out, yeah. you, they can cover that. They'll cover that's that. a good way to do that. I've never really thought about managing our staff by having that extra one that can float. Yeah. So that's pretty slick. Sir. So also, I noticed you have weight equipment here. We have uh, the biggest gym in the city and county <laughs> of Denver. Uh, no, actually, um, so do have gym equipment, which is nice. We don't have to leave the firehouse to go. We can, but we don't have to. Uh, most of the time, we don't work out in here. Right. We'll pull the rig out of the, the bay and we'll move the stuff in there, or we'll take it out front. Okay. And work out in the nice outside. Right. So. Right. Yeah, today would be a perfect day to, perfect right day out to go outside, outside and row in the Dude. grass. Yeah. It would be a great day. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed you got a bathroom towards the back area here. You bathroom. Style. So older firehouse, so there only is one bathroom. Okay. Which is almost unheard of nowadays. Right. So we just treat it like you'd be at home. So there's men and women working together that day. The door shuts. It's their bathroom. And then when it opens, it's free to use. So yeah. it shuts and locks but one bathroom and you treat it just like you would at home. Okay, so um, it's that mutual respect that, yes. that, that between male and female. Yes. And it's almost that brotherhood, sisterhood, rather than that separation yeah. of, so of the sexes. We all share, we all clean it together, so, we all live in it together. Right. And it's it's actually pretty cool, yeah. but it's, like I said, very uncommon. Love the old subway tiles and <laughs> these lockers. Again, it brings you back to that time of, yes. you know, these old wooden lockers that you have. Um, you feel, just standing here, like there's a lot of history there here. There's a lot of history. So I hear that this house is actually haunted. So there is a rumor that it's actually haunted. Actually, um, what were they called? Uh, there was a, they do a TV show where they travel around the world and they actually, they did a segment in this firehouse. Okay. Yeah. I have not well, seen it. Like a Josh Gates kind of firehouse? Yeah, like a scare, uh, Paranormal, paranormal act activity. Paranormal activity actually did a segment here one night. Okay. I don't know exactly what they I've never seen it. But okay. well, the rumor is it's haunted. I believe it's haunted. There's some stuff that's happened around. So in 1895, Den this is the only Denver station that a whole crew actually passed oh, away in man. a fire. So it was a hotel fire, the floor collapsed, and the whole crew perished, perished yeah. in that fire. So I don't think it's a bad ghost. Like okay. People see her haunted and they like freak out. Like, <laughs> right. I think it's a good ghost and I think he, they just take care of the firehouse because you'll hear maybe sweeping in the dorm while nobody's in there or stuff will turn on when nobody's in there. Okay. You'll hear like the washer and dryer will open maybe and no one's been down there. So there's been some stuff that's happened that the rumor is the station three. That's first leg. Like, that's first leg. Like. So Josh Gage, if you're watching this, send Jessica and Phil to come do the station. See if it is actually haunted. See if we can catch it on camera. So, so that's awesome. Yes. What else do we have? Alrighty. So if we move this way. All right. So we walk right into your engine bay. So engine bay. So like I said, not a whole lot of room. I mean, we went from the day room to the dorm to the engine bay and we're literally on just the other side okay. of the wall and you normally just run an engine out of here just one engine there's okay. i wish there was more space for other stuff but there's not yeah you couldn't even fit a tower through the doors or anything no yeah. so quick in the bay area extra hose storage right. yeah and uh, bunker. i don't see gear racks there's no actual gear racks because there's just not enough room for each one of us to have one so there's a spot for each person's helmet. Yep. And then all of our boots and all of our coats go together. Okay. okay. So now, do you have a gear washer or anything? How do you get? We don't have gear washers in the firehouse, so we have two sets assigned to us. Okay. When it goes into an IDLH or a structure fire, 
It's immediately bagged up and it's sent off to a third party, okay. which has it back in three days. We go into our alternate set. Right. And then if both sets happen to, I mean, you're lucky enough to get back-to-back -back fires, which yep. everyone wants. Yep. We have a whole warehouse out at the thing with reserve gear. Okay. And you get sent out there to get sized for reserve stuff until your stuff comes back. Okay. That's a good way to do it. So. Yeah. I noticed that you have the, you know, homemade plume events. Homemade line That's down here. Plume but events. this reminds me of the garages that you have. Uh, the service garages that they hook them on, make sure that they're not asphyxiating themselves. Yeah. But that works. It works. Yeah. Turns on as soon as the door opens, sucks it, and it's actually measured to actually fall off of the, the exhausts. Okay. As soon as the rig clears the Just bag. like the brand new plume events. <laughs> yeah, just old school, different model. Right, right, right. I also noticed the doors. If we go look at these doors. We can real go quick. look at the doors. So as I was doing our intro, I noticed you have the old wooden doors. And old these are bifold type doors. Yes. Um, and these are making a comeback in today's firehouses. It's the newer, older renovation. Okay. I see that, so these aren't the original wood doors. Okay. I think they've been replaced. Right. But all of that up there is the original work. Right. Which, I mean, just look at the engineering and the yeah. mechanics of that kind of thing. And we service them. We clean the old oil off and we right. grease them. Right. Um, but it, it, they are coming back. Less rigs drive through them. Yeah. Because you can see the whole door the entire time. <laughs> and Rather than the roll-up door that you end up taking off, you know, your ladder or your lights on the top of your truck. And they're fast. I mean, those doors open instantly. Right. There's one drawback that that's they open or they're shut. They're, okay. There's no in between. Okay. So they're either open or shut. Okay. Yeah, and that was one of the things that we pressed when we did a station out of Green, Ohio. They went back to the bifold doors, and one of the things that they did that for is because they open very, very quickly. Yes. Uh, they were able to save a couple of minutes getting to a fire by actually having a door that opens quickly yes. and less damage. They are actually more expensive nowadays. They you are guys right. are all ahead of the game. They're making a circle all the way back to what you already have. That's true. That's pretty slick. Yeah, and it's really cool to see them. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, and you have a kitchen and everything else here. We have too, a right? kitchen, washer dryer, and we're almost to the end of the firehouse, so we're almost out of space. Okay. Oh, it smells good back here. Yeah, so while we've been talking, the other two have been in here slaving away in the kitchen. Okay. So Hello, guys. Hello. I'm Mike from Heroes Next Door. Nice Hi, to meet Mike. you. You are? Tony. Tony. And? Victor. All right, nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting us in. Smells absolutely delicious back here. So this is your kitchen area. Kitchen area, four seats, not very much room. Industrial sized stove. Right. Very, very small kitchen and matching subway. The old tile. subway tiles, yeah, tile. yeah. So, but it works well. You, you cook anything you need to. Yes. So, so and this is where all the problems get solved. All of them, <laughs> right there. Right around the kitchen table. So we do shop every day. We do try to put two meals on the table every day. Okay. Uh, some days we're busier and we have to go out and eat. So what was your job here? Your name was Tony? Tony, Okay. Yeah, I'm the engineer. Okay, and what does that mean for anybody that don't know FAR? You and I know FAR, but we have viewers that don't. What's an engineer? Sure. Uh, engineer is a promoted position. You, you test with our, our Civil Service Commission and they, they go through both uh, written tests and practical uh, evaluations. And then uh, you go on a list, get promoted, um, you're responsible for driving the, the fire rig and operating the pump. So getting the guys there safe um, uh, and, and knowing where you're going and getting them getting the water they need and getting them water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also an engineer on a truck. So a truck company be similar job. They're just operating the uh, aerial and then they also have uh, duties that would uh, fall inside the, the structure or outside depending on the uh, what, what occupancy we're going to. Okay, and Victor, you are the? I am the lieutenant for the day. Okay. Um, I'm a roving lieutenant with the department. Uh, no, they're normal officers on their Kelly, on his Kelly day. Okay. So I'm roving in the day, going in for his spot. So okay. I'm in the front seat in charge of the crew. I'm um, just kind of overseeing the day-to-day -day operations. Well, thank Making you for sure your service. Thanks. Hopefully we're not disturbing you too oh, much no. today. Nope, not so, at all. No. So welcome. All right, and uh, the rookie, you guys are both regular firefighters, Fire right? Fighters. So you, you guys are right in the back seat. seat. Yep. And you guys do the hard work. The fun stuff. <laughs> the fun stuff. I wouldn't call it the hard work. I call uh, it the fun stuff. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Do you have more in the house? Just a little this? more. There's the captain's office okay. back this way. 
All right, so this is the captain's office. So your 15th bed. Um, and then this is where the captain takes care of all, so the housework, so. Okay. We. So the guy that's floating today, is he the captain? He was a lieutenant He's though. a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. okay. So Denver runs each firehouse, each rig has two lieutenants and a captain. And okay. that's basically the chain of command. Okay. So the captain's in charge of the rig, and then the two lieutenants answer to him, and then all of us are under. Okay, so the that. captain's not here today. He's captain's today. not here today. He got off this morning. Okay. Um, and But he'll make like the final rig decisions or the final firehouse decisions or what we're doing with this and then we all kind of trickle down and then okay he makes the end all so signal. he's not sharing this bed with three different platoons he is the guy yep for this firehouse he's the only one that does he normally does he do the kelly rotations also or does he, he does the kelly rotations he's okay. just on the, the a shift and, and today's the b shift okay so okay that makes he's sense. here every a shift yeah this is a very nice place that to set up the old yeah. Again, old desk. Old desk. Old, I mean, they tried the I mean, top and a lot of guys want to get rid of it and he's like, No, yeah. it's part of the firehouse. It's right. Like, right. I don't need the new fancy ergonomic <laughs> thing. Like it's part of the firehouse. Right, right. And uh, it, it gives you that feeling. I wish we could show the viewers and, and give them that understanding of what it feels like in here. It's a totally different feeling than when we were in Wayne Township, Indiana with their brand new firehouse. Granted, it's a beautiful, beautiful firehouse places. firehouse. They get a lot of technology. But when you come into a firehouse like this that has this history uh, being haunted, has the old wood doors, yeah. you know, the, the stuff like that, it gives you a whole different understanding and feeling yeah. when I'm just standing here. Yeah. So do you- Well, right uh, outside this door, I'll show you something really cool. So when they poured this hallway way, way back when, a cat snuck in here. Okay. And there's actually cat prints in the concrete. Oh, really? So okay. it's just another little piece of the firehouse culture. Oh, yeah. That like you can see that like. Okay. You'll probably never see that in a new firehouse because somebody would have fixed it. Right. But like that, they're like, well, I don't know. Well, it's it's here. It's part of it now. Right. Right. And it's been here ever since. So I noticed the maps on the wall. The maps can you kind of give us a, an idea of where you're at in Denver? Are yeah. You, is this so the best one or is that the best this one? This is probably the best one. Okay. This is all of Denver. Okay. So that one breaks down this little area. Okay. But this is all of Denver. Okay. So in all of Denver, we're over here. Gotcha. And this map, if we just look at who's close to us, we're here. Here's the five points that we're okay. talking about. Okay, which is why corner. you're named after that. And then you, there's truck fours over here, engine eights right here, tens and nines. Okay. So we are here and we are completely surrounded. Okay. So what's your kind of coverage area? Coverage area, I'd give us this circle. Back. So about a square mile so, almost. Yeah. And how many residents and workers and stuff do you guys have to deal with on a kind of a daily basis, give or take? Give or take on a daily basis, I'd say upwards of a million plus. A million plus people coming in and out of downtown. A mile, mile and a half square. Work, just normally live here or down here just for the weekend or okay. down here. So that somewhere. with that um, volume, what kind of volume, how many calls are you getting per year, give or take? 4,400, 4,500 a year. Okay. We're, I think we're upwards of 2,500 this year already. Okay. And halfway through. Just for one engine. Just for one engine. Man, you guys are running your butts off. It's fun. Now. It keeps <laughs> so, us busy. Yeah, yeah. So are you guys also uh, first responders? Are you EMT, we paramedics? Are EMTs and we are in a two-tier system with Denver Health. Okay. So we are EMTs fire and then they do the ALI, or yeah, advanced yeah. life support and transport. Okay, okay. So it's a good partnership between two different services, but they're not part of the fire service. They're not part of the you know, From what I've heard, we haven't been there yet, but New York, they run their own department as far as EMS and fire. Yes. <laughs> so they they have separate divisions, but work for the same department. Okay. As far as Denver Health and Denver Fire, they're separate entities that work together. Okay, that's awesome. So. And this brings us back to your crew room. Yeah, so quick pass, like yeah. you said, nice and small. But yeah. 400 square feet. Right back to the beginning. Does everything that you need. You guys are serving the community well. We yes. thank you for your service. Thank you. So thank you for letting us in, having the viewers take a look at this station. It's very cool to see. Of course, so you're welcome anytime. As we uh, finish up here, I just want to say to the viewers, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notifications so we can keep bringing you more. We're trying to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your guys' help, we can do that. Uh, we also have the merchandise, so hit up on the website, get a t-shirt or something like that, help support us so we can keep traveling across the country. 
Thank you for watching. This is another episode of Station Cribs, and we'll see you again next week.